welcome. Um, I know I shouldn't say welcome because some of y'all are just coming on to the room. So, you know, I'm going to welcome you anyway. And I'm going to welcome all our um, guests or all our viewers that always come into the room. Um, that's it. All right. So we're going to get started. I think there's one person already in the room, Frank. Um, so just me and Frank and Shop Mom. All right. So what tonight's live stream was going to be was going to be just open mic what any whatever anybody wanted to talk about um huh i'm sorry that's your great granddaughter had her sound on oh okay so um we we're going to talk about whatever we wanted to talk about um and then i got inspired by rose's live stream she did earlier on instagram i encourage you to go look up rose she's a awesome fa fabricator um I got inspired to talk about fabrication, but Terry's in the room and uh, forgot about the daylight savings time. Well, I have not forgot about Terry. It's weird because when Terry was here, I forgot about having a beer, but now that Terry's back in Germany, we're gonna cheer Terry and Arcy. Thanks for joining us from Germany. Um, so I got inspired by Rose earlier, um, F f just to talk about f fabrication, I think that's one of my favorite things is fabrication, prototyping, doing something that hadn't been done before. I'd rather do that than just about, well, stop it, people. I will say just about anything, but you know what I'm, what I'm talking about. So that's what I was inspired by. It wasn't going to be that at all. And then Motor Trend and Hot Rod Magazine. Um, I think one of our viewers told us last Friday that there's an article in the Hot Rod Magazine, the newest one that just came out, about Smokey Unix hot vapor engine. Um, and it's just a reprint of another article that was done before. In fact, there's, well, you don't need to see up there. I don't need to get up and show it to you. But that all being said, I'm inspired about fabrication and you can't love fabrication and not, not love Smokey Unix. Um, his fabrication skills were amazing. And we'll get into that um, if y'all wanna get into that. And then happy St. Patrick's Day. I got my green on. I have my St. Patty's beer. Not green, but um, happy St. Patty's Day, everybody. Should it be St. Patrick's or should it be St. Patty's? I, it's St. Patrick's. It's St. Patrick's. I just And well, it's also Tom's birthday. Don't think we're going to see Thomas. He has a trip that he has to take. But happy belated birthday to... TR, Terry's birthday was Pi Day. Yes. And of course, that's actually uh, the mathematical concept, not... Oh, Pi Day. Pi Day was Terry's, yes. 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 Uh, pi, and we're talking, you know, kind of pi I like, but we're talking pi like in 3.14 every digit after that. Um, but yes, happy related birthday, uh, Terry and Tom, if you see this later, happy birthday. Um, I commend you to what you're doing on your birthday. Um, all righty. I'm drinking an IPA with you. All right. Well then I will cheer to that. We'll talk about whatever, whatever y'all want to talk about. I don't give a, I do, but unless your mom tells me to stop, let's just go. Um, or not. I don't know, but I, I did, you know, anyway, anyway, anyway. Nothing, no questions? So far, there are no questions. I can just go? Although I do think there were a number of suggestions made prior. Mm -hmm. and, and then you got inspired by Rose, so... Yes, I did. Like I said, I was going to talk about lifter preload. I was going to start that at... Uh, somebody had asked, and I think I read it... Um, after the live stream and it was it was just they missed the live stream but um asked a question about lifters if you come on and you were you're the one that asked that question bring it back up again but i was going to talk about lifter preload which lifter preload is what a hydraulic lifter has as opposed to lash is is what a solid lifter has so i was going to get talking about you know lifters what type of lifters roller lifters non-roller lifters flat tap it but that's all been done before, unless y'all want to hear that. And I got inspired by Rose. So Rose is a, a phenomenal woman. She just fabricates. I mean, she just has so much just fabricating skills. Just, I mean, I just love to listen to her talk because... The talent really just oozes. It, it, it does. Um, and I, I kind of got, got inspired because she says what's on, your, on her mind and she just doesn't, just doesn't hold back of being her. I wish I, I could I could learn something from that. I'm, you know, anyway, I, I was inspired. 
And I thought, man, this is great. It's going to be a great, you know, great live stream. I'm just going to just go, go for what, what she got me going on, which okay, is fabricating. Before you do, yes. Be Twin Addicted actually yep. does have a topic, and then I'll bring you back around to Rose. All right. Um, have you guys been experiencing hydraulic lift or failure? Only for how many years now? Everybody in the industry has. Um, and the hydraulic lifter failures that we started seeing, it's, it's, um, has a lot to do with a lot of different things. Does it make sense or doesn't make sense? But let's get, we'll talk about hydraulic lifter failures since that's what it started out, you know, that's what we're going to start off with. Um, the problem with the hydraulic lifter failures, there's more than one culprit. So um, I still haven't really or I'm not on board with the inferior metals. Um, yes, no, kind of, not really. The number one thing, what I see is uh, the oils of today are not the oils of yesterday, but yet we're using lifters of yesterday. So it was, it was gonna happen. There's no way that it couldn't happen. When we remove the zinc and phosphorus by we, I don't mean me, I don't mean you, the EPA, the powers that be, remove zinc and phosphorus from our oils and then we're wondering why we have lifter failures well it's because our engines need zinc and phosphorus in it the older the engines are the more it needs and really a lifter is pretty a, a, a standard hydraulic lifter is so primitive you know it goes back to the model a days it's literally a lobe looks like an egg a piece of metal round a cylinder solid hydraulic it could have um, um a piston inside of it but it rides metal to metal it is so primitive so primitive metal to metal why would we still be doing metal to metal lifters makes no sense and a lot of the imports are still because you know they, they have a um a bucket on top it's still metal to metal um so we need zinc and phosphorus to to protect these two metals they embed themselves in the metal and they're aware re resistance so we get rid of zinc and phosphorus and we start having lifter failures so one of the things it's it's kind of like it's it's you know it was meant to happen i mean i don't know uh, there's too many things that that uh uh it's like the perfect storm. You walk into any auto parts, unless you walk into a specialty store like, like our store or a speed shop, um, all oils on the shelf have one thing in common. They're all high detergent. Okay, they have two things in common. They don't have zinc and phosphorus anymore. So they have no zinc and phosphorus and they're high detergent. How do you remove stuff from your clothes? Detergent. So any zinc and phosphorus that you may have had when you went and bought the oil from, I don't want to say, you know, AutoZone, Walmart, or wherever, HEB, or wherever you bought, thinking oil is oil is oil, well, no. And all oils off the shelf have high detergents. There's a reason for that. Modern cars have variable cam timing. They have a lot of oil um, um, hydraulic systems on a car now. So oil is not, not only just a lubricant, not only a coolant, it's also now hydraulic pressure. So that's how they open valves, that's variable cam timing. They, they move the cams with hydraulic pressure. So when the solenoid closes, the cams have to go back to their natural state with spring pressure. So if the little oil holes are clogged, it slows down the cam movement, high detergent. So now uh, the Honda VTEX and all these different modern vehicles have tons of hydraulics going on in the motor. So they need high detergent to keep all these components clean. The little hydraulic actuator. High detergent is going to flatten your cam. That's, so, they're, so that's the problem. Is we've changed, we've, we've, we modernized our oils, but we haven't modernized our camshafts. So what you need is a high zinc um, um, fortified oil. Don't think that adding zinc bottle i know uh, you know i always say stuff and maybe that's why i don't have any sponsors because the powers that be people that sell products are i don't want to say they've made snake oil but they made these bottles of zinc and phosphorus after the fact they didn't really care about you the whole time they let you flatten cams out we'll just sell you more cams 
you all start educating yourself and you find out there's no zinc and phosphorus in it. So now they get you a bottle of zinc and phosphorus that you can add in, solves all the problem. I'm talking about a lot of, of manufacturers with a lot of big names. I'm not gonna say them because if they have a zinc additive, you know, I go back to what Smoke Unix says. If you have to add an additive, it's because you got shipped for oil. So get real oil and don't have to add an additive to it. What Lake Speed Jr. says, the oldest brisket specialist in the world, in my mind, um, years ago he, he said something that made lots of sense. Okay, when oil is manufactured, when it's being made, okay, all oil comes from three holes in the ground all over the world. There's just three holes in the ground. Doesn't matter. We don't need to get into all that. But as oil is manufactured, it's at a lot hotter temperature. They add chemicals into it. Every oil manufacturer has different chemical packages. You know, some add the color purple into it. Some add, you know, everybody adds whatever they add. They buy the stock oil and then they add what they think is necessary for their oil. Um, they add all kinds of different stuff. It's at a lot hotter temperature than it's ever going to get in your engine. The molecules expand, the zinc and the phosphorus gets in there, it gets embedded in there. So here's how Lake said it. You order some tea, it comes to your table, it's just unsweetened tea, okay? You put sugar in it and you stir it up. When you take a sip, it's sweet tea. Eat your meal for a little bit and then go grab your tea again. You have unsweetened tea, all the sugars at the bottom of the glass. Now, if they made the hot tea, when it was being made, it was hot, boiling there, and they added sugar then, the sugar gets blended into it. The molecules accept the sugar. It's a lot hotter than what you're going to drink it. The temperature of the tea when it's at your glass, the sugar is just going to turn to, you know, sugar crystals at the bottom of the glass. So every time you got to stir to stir them up, and then you drink sweetened tea. Same with your engine oil. Adding all those bottles of snake oil because, you know, all these manufacturers says this is what you need to protect your camp. No, you don't. That's going to go in and it's going to circulate and get caught on the filter. What's a filter supposed to do? Filter. You stir your sugar around and add a filter to it. Well, all your sugar it is. So there's the point. There's the point. Adding these additives to add the zinc and the phosphorus to your oil, it's not really... It may prolong, it may, we've had a customer that went two years, two and a half years, and he broke his cam in right, and he was, I was almost on board of saying, you know what, you've just shown us something, maybe, you know, this thing about adding the, the bottles of zinc and phosphorus, you know, but, well, it finally flattened the cam. It, it did flatten the cam, so, and that's with no spring pressure, okay? So there's, there's one of the things is our oils are your, your, you're you're made to fail. You're if you if you just go by what the industry tells you and sells you, you're gonna fail. Okay, that's the first thing. Remember back in the day, you didn't have to do a cam break in. Cam break in. We put a, a comp cam, a crane cam. We put ISKI cam in. We fired it up. We let it idle, and we set the timing. And we I mean we never broke anything in. We broke a lot of stuff. But we never broke anything in, and we never flattened the cam. Now. You have to rev your engine up to 2,000 RPMs for 20 minutes minimum, right from startup. If you crank your engine too much to get oil pressure, back in the day, we would just crank an engine, crank, 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 with no spark plugs, oil pressure would come up. I know it was wrong. We all did it. Come on, tell me you didn't do it. No problem. You can wipe a cam out just by cranking it. So, A, you should be pre-lubing everything, and you should be using an oily, a pre-luber anyway. But I'm just saying what, what we did, it was, you know, we all did it. We all did it. It ain't going to happen anymore. You bet, if you turn a motor over too many times before it fires up, you've already wiped the cam. Okay? The lifter has to spin in the journal, in the bore. In the bore, the, the, the cam is not perfectly flat. It's slightly angled. The, the bottom of the lifter is not perfectly flat. So as you turn your engine over, the lifters are rotating. All it takes is a moment of that lifter not rotating when you're first getting it turned over, and the cam wipes the lifter, and that's it. Once it wipes the lifter and it starts doing this, this you know, wiping pattern on there, it ain't going to spin anymore. So back in the day, we pushed lifters and bores. If they were tight, we'd push them in harder. 
Now you better make sure your lifter spins freely. Make sure that you hone your lifter bores out. Make sure they spin freely. I take a, a marker and put a mark on my, on my lifters. And as you're turning your engine over, you'll see the lifters turn. You'll be turning it over. You'll see the lifter turn. If a lifter doesn't spin, you better stop right there and figure out what, what's wrong. More than likely in the bore is not right or the angle is not right on the camshaft or the bottom of the lifter. And that is, um, um, I read a bunch of, bunch of forums and people have been testing this stuff out and it seems like everybody has a different um, design or, or how much of an angle that you need to the lifter. So the lifter or to the camshaft, but they're not flat. If it's flat, it's not gonna spin. I'd have to do a diagram, I've done it before. Since it's at an angle and it wipes one side of the lifter, it spins the lifter. There you go, those are the, the failures there. Now let's get into the check valves. Everybody's been having check valve issues, check valve issues, cheap check valves from China or from wherever, and they're having check valve issues. How has the manufacturers now, um, is a little sheet of paper in there, warning, no warranty, hey, there's no warranty anyway. You have a flat cam, there's no warranty. What does the cam manufacturer tell you? When we saw you the cam, it had a lobe on it. The, the load being gone, being flat, that's happened on your on your end. There's no warranty. So if, so thinking I'm going to pull the cam out and I'm going to send it back to the manufacturer, I'm going to give them my two cents because it, it flattened the cam. They don't want to hear it. They're all flattening. Unless you do the 20-minute uh, uh, fire up. Well, I like, you know, plenty of driven. It used to be Joe Gibbs. Now, driven assembly lube on the cam it has a lot of zinc and phosphorus i rub that all over the camshaft and the bottom of the lifters i like to use an amzo on the side of my lifters it takes a lot of different chemicals to to do an engine um so you're gonna need to also use a real oil do uh, use a driven um hot rod oil use an amzo hot rod oil how do you know that it's made with zinc and phosphorus the bottle says hot rod oil on it and you'll say somewhere in the bottle, not for highway use. You got the right oil for your hot rod, for your vintage car. It says not for highway use. So it's going to be, like I said, it's going to be a driven oil. It's going to be an AMS oil, their, their, their race oil, their hot rod oil. Um, Valvoline VR, um, there you go. We used to use Dello 400. We used to use Rotella T, and it was better. And for a long time, it did work. I'm kind of starting to see that they're starting to mess with that formula as well. Um, so you're gonna to have to use a specialty oil. That's why don't even put a flat tappet cam in. Unless it's a restoration, I won't use a flat tappet cam unless the, the a customer signs off on it. But you're gonna spend the $1,000 you're gonna spend for a roller cam, roller lifters and all that. And the retrofit kit. And the retrofit kit. You're gonna spend that more. Um, ask. Lewis about his, you know, flat cam, three, you, you spend more than that by fighting it, by fighting it. Oh, I'm not going to wear roller cam. I'm old school. I'm not going to do that. I never had this problem. Well, now you had it three times and now the motor has to come out and you got to put new bearings in. Did you save any money at all? So a roller cam is go roller cam. Here's the problem now. The check valves in the hydraulic lifter. I did a big block not too long ago, and the sheet of paper, I won't tell you what manufacturer lifters they were, high quality lifter, and the, the little piece of paper in the end there that says no warranty, void, no, no, no warranty, and don't use you know anything more than a 1030, maybe a 1040 oil in it. Oh, how funny. And it's like. I'm sorry, go ahead. But these lifters are for a big block Chevy. If this is a regular older big block Chevy with the three thousands main clearance and two and a half to three on the rods, but yet I bought these lifters for my big block and the sheet of paper says, oh, don't use, but you know, thin sewing machine oil. So in other words, I have no choice but to put 2050 in it or whatever I'm gonna use for the, my big block, or I'm gonna put in the oil that you want so the check valve doesn't collapse. But, I, I have no oil pressure. It's a, it's, it's a tough, tough game. I can go on cams 
or lifters all day. Rose is in the room. So, oh, and you said there was something funny. I want to do much on cams. I don't know. No, no, no. Uh, Chauncey actually uh, made a remark to make sure that the push rod spin freely after checking lash as well. Mm -hmm. And Rose would like you to talk about push rod alignment issues. Those Edelbrock Dodge heads scared her. Um, you're going to, uh, I love Edelbrock, you know, uh, uh, um, love Smitty, just passed not too long ago. Um, Jim Losey told their friend, love, love Edelbrock. But, but I won't run, and I know right in the box, and I'm not, and maybe it's different from, you know, a month ago, two months ago till, till today. Um, I won't run an, an Edelbrock head out of the box. Just won't do it. What I either prefer to do is either buy uh, the Edelbrock heads bare, the castings are great. American quality alloys, beautiful, beautiful castings, machine work. Um, but they were using now. Now that they moved to to Tennessee, now that it's own, you know, it's a different thing. Uh, maybe they're using a better valve spring. But uh, I broke a valve spring uh, um, right after cam break in. Right after cam break in, bro broke a valve spring. You know, um, the studs. Well, oh, they, they they look black. They look like ARPs, man. They're they're probably ARPs or something real close to AARPs, maybe. You know, they're old ass, you know, but the studs, if they don't have ARP on the end of the stud, don't use it. Don't use it. I don't and I like Pioneer and I like it, all these different other brands. Screw a stud into a head. And when the stud does this, and you got them all screwed into the head, and you look down and they're all going all different ways. Screw a set of ARPs into a head. They're, they're straight. All right, so um, that's the thing. Also, valve, the valve uh, um, stem heights, this is what I say. And a year or so ago, probably two years now, we sent more of the small block Chevys back than most people bought. And like what the, you know, I, I heard down the pipeline to shop mom, why is Danny sending back all these heads? My, you know, my mom's shop has, you know, 18 employees. They do way more work than I do, way more. And they're like, they use that as an example. That, you know, Mission Auto Parts doesn't, they buy way more heads than Danny buys, and they never send one back. In fact, no one's ever sent a head back. So, shop mom came talk to me. We talked a little bit. What, what did, uh, uh, um, um, shop mom, the easiest thing? Was the head heads that we sent back were they wrong? That's it. Don't don't ask why did Danny send back? Were they then I got a phone after the another set and another set and these things kept on going back and they were getting tired and I said, Look, stop shipping heads to me. You own a straight edge, you're you're the warehouse. This is you know, this is the EPW back then. You own a straight edge, put a straight edge on all the stems. If they're straight, send me the heads. If they rock, pull them off the shelf. And then they started pulling heads off the shelf. And the the main point was, you're picking on why does Danny send heads back all the time? Bigger answer, you pull these heads out and you put a straight edge before you send me a set of heads. Well, there were no heads to send, you know? So the point is, are they wrong? Yes, but everybody uses it. Yes, because everybody does, and I'm not picking on anybody, because other people do, I don't want to say inferior work, obviously they make it work. Here it is, a Chevrolet is an adjustable stud. You just turn the nut a couple more times. So if all the valves are all different heights, they're adjustable, that's the answer I got. Danny, they're adjustable, just adjust them. Well, no, when I build a motor, I want every valve stem height, the exact height off that spring pad. I want everything spring bad. I want everything parallel, parallel off the crankshaft, parallel off the deck, parallel, parallel, everything parallel. I don't want to use 16 different push rod links, right? I want to use, I want to order a set of 16 push rods. I don't want to do my valve geometry and then order this link push rod, that link push rod, and they go, it doesn't matter, it's hydraulic. You know, you can adjust it. My motors sound d different than other people's motors because they're just smooth. Everything is right. Every valve opens. When the cam grind, the cam grinder or the designer designed the camshaft, 
Did he make all the lobes within ten thousands? Eh, they're within ten. No, he made them all the same. Made everything the same, right? What does Smoke Unix say? You're building eight one-cylinder engines connected by a common crankshaft. When you do that, you find out most stuff out of the box you, you got to send back. But anyway, I love the, the cylinder head, but the valve geometry is all wrong. On that Chrysler small block head, um, originally the Chrysler small blocks were shaft mounted, uh, you know, bolt downs as a, on a shaft. So you pick a push rod link and you bolt it down, you set your lifter preload and that's it. So if all your valves aren't the same height, you know, I know you can put an adjustable set of rockers. You, you most definitely can. Just take a straight edge and check all of your, your, your stem heights. They should be right on the money. They should be flat. You shouldn't have a big old rock with one higher than the other and all different heights. Here's another thing. If all the heights are all over the place, where's the placement of that valve in the combustion chamber? The valves are all the same length. Oh, we don't care about combustion chamber CC as being the same in every chamber, right? We're not building an engine with eight, you know, engines connected by a common crankshaft. Because if you are, then you want that valve to be the same distance in that combustion chamber on all of them. I don't want to CC every head and then every single combustion chamber, which we do, and then find, you know, oh my God, I'm, I'm you know, my, my, my CCs are all over the place. I know. Most of the time, or for 99.5% of the people, it doesn't matter. It does not matter. But after I explained all of this, yes, we got credit for all these heads. So here's the dilemma with that. Do you go to a restaurant and say, I don't want a Mexican plate? That's what I'm going to use because that's what I order. But, or I don't want that, that steak rancher or another Mexican plate. I don't want plate. the lunch special. I don't want the, the lunch special. Uh, but bring me two enchiladas. Bring me some rice. I don't want the beans. Who doesn't want beans? Okay, bring me the beans. I don't want, who doesn't want rice? Okay, you know, but you go and say, no, no, I don't want everything that comes on that plate, that lunch special. I want this, this, and this because I'm going to change out the tamale for a taco or I'm going to change out, you know, it's che cheaper to buy the lunch special. It's not cheaper to buy everything a la carte. You'll end up having a $30 lunch plate by going, no, I just want this and I just want that. So it costs more money to do things right. So you have this dilemma. So generally, I'll either buy a bare set of heads that way I can put manly valves, I can put Ferrero valves, I can put, you know, pack springs, I can put, you know, comp retainers, I can put all of the good stuff on or buy the heads complete, start checking them and then you start tossing. The springs, they're gone and I put a real, a real set of springs on them. Um, depending on what build, you don't have to change every single thing out. I haven't broken a retainer or, or, or a keeper. They look like comps and now they're owned by the same people. So it could be a different world now. You know, so anyway, there you go. I'm sorry you're having problem with this with those. And didn't you pull those heads off, Rose? I think you did, didn't. If I remember right, keeping up with that, you ended up pulling those heads off and not using them. Um, I don't know, but if, if you're Rose, if you're still in the room, um, let me know. But I thought I did hear that you didn't use them. You pulled them off. Um, I don't know. So let me know. Oh, how funny. What? It says, I just remembered that today is Daniel Solis Live. Yeah, every Friday, guys, unless something untoward happens, Danny makes every effort to be. To try to be live with, with y'all. Like I told Rose earlier, this is my therapy. Um, and we all get down on ourselves. We all get like, you know, like what Rose was saying earlier, um, and I'm just the same way. Right now I have something going on in my face right here. I don't want, you know, you know. The one positive comment or the one person that picked up something, the one person that you helped, that makes it all go away. <coughs> it does get tough because, you know, we're, we're sensitive people. That's just the way we are. And it does get a little bit on the tough side. Um, I was going to have a video. If you remember last weekend, I actually, last Friday, I actually had a video that I dropped. I've been working on this video Editing it, editing it, editing it. Me and Faye filmed this 
man, I was looking at the weather and it was hot. We're cold now, so it was at the end of summer. And we took the, uh, the, the Plymouth home and we pulled the engine out. We shot for Saturday, Sunday, we shot and we shot video. That's a lot of video to edit. And it's tough. And I don't, you know, I'm not the best at, at editing or they'd be all kinds of windows and things, you know. I actually like what Rose did. She, I'm going to ask you how you got that. You were putting pictures up and talking like, you know, to my world because anyway, back to my editing. And, you know, I'm, the, the videos that I have had is when we got the engine ready here, Faith fixed the carburetor. We took the carburetor apart. We got everything ready. And now it was going to be on for this Friday. So before Faye left two weeks ago, we sat here and she actually helped me edit a little bit and it got me going. It was like a dead video. It was just huge and it wasn't working for me. Sat and kind of, it was nice to have a different outlook on it. And we like started moving along and all right, cool, cool, cool. And we're, I said, all right, that's all I needed. I'm, I'm, I'm back into it again. I've been working on it. Every night I get home, we have a dog now, look at all my cuts. And um, it's just tough to work and, edit but yesterday yesterday the day before yesterday somebody comments on the last two videos of the hot vapor engine oh stop with the fast forwarding stop with the music your channel will be so much better um and then on the next video oh stop with your fast forwarding stop with your you know uh with the music you know it's, so my instant response, no problem. I'm stopping right now. You know, this, this Friday's video, gone, done. I'll stop. You know, hey, and I don't I charge. That's the wrong attitude. That is the wrong attitude. And, you know, shop moms right there, give them encouragement. Rose, like I said, you were, I'm fired up again to, to just to just have a good time again. Uh, but I'm done. I'm done. You know what? I don't charge for those videos. And what do you, do you have to pay to see any of my videos? You may not like the music. You may not like the editing. Enjoy the hot vapor engine being torn apart. No, no one's ever seen the inside of the hot vapor engine. You missed, you cut your nose to spike your face or however that goes. And I just said, you know, there's that. I didn't do that because, uh, like I said, I don't charge for anything, but I, I did say, I even wrote back, done, video gone. You'll never have to see it again. Afterwards, Shaw Mom says, you don't need to let one person just do that. But, hey, we're sensitive people, no matter who. Uh, you know, people think okay, that. Okay, but let's just, also oh, point out sorry. that as rough as we think we have it, look around. You can always find somebody who has it a bit rougher. And it's really important. I Thank you for taking drinks of water because that's important, too. Yes, I'll but drink some more water. It's really important to just put things in perspective. There are people who hate because they don't like themselves. And it's far easier to criticize someone else than to look in the mirror. So don't take it to heart. I, I, you keep doing you. I'm going to keep doing me, especially because, like I said earlier, you know, I, I'm just like, I want to be more like Rose. Just be you. And, you know, if you don't like it, this... I need to be more like like Rose. I need to get some shirts, some pins. Real, be more like Rose. Um, Jim Cole's in the room. Jim, how you doing? Uh, good talking to you this week. Um, on the AFR heads, I love AFR heads. If it, if we're doing, if you watch, if you watch any of my my bills, um, they're going to be AFR heads on on a custom build. Um, we're AFR dealers. I'll order a small black set of Chevy heads. Uh, we'll give the CCs. I get them fully CC imported, including the combustion chambers. Good quality valves. I'll even change stuff out. I like to use an LS valve now on my small block Chevys, which is an eight millimeter valve. Flows more air. You don't need a big old port to, to get the velocity going. Um, so I'll change stuff up a little bit. They don't make me the head that I, that I need. So we'll order that head. I'll order LS valves in it. We can pick the springs we want. I pulled an AFR head before I would take them all apart and it, now I pull one intake and one exhaust um, on each head if I see something, but normally that's it. I'll put two test springs on and I'll mock up the engine. Done, done, get an AFR head. I like Brodix as well, but AFR is our, our, our go-to real head. Um, all right, and then I saw something else besides the, um, what did Rose say about uh, Valve? Uh, about her customers? Yeah, the customer pulled. Uh, the, the customer kept them on. We never resolved the collapse lifter. It left. 
And she says, I have another customer that bailed on their set because the push rod angles were unsatisfactory. The valve geometry is everything. Valve geometry is everything. Um, it sounds like it had too much preload. Um, the lifter preload, if you're running a hydraulic, it collapsed lifter, it was hydraulic. Sorry, uh, take me a while to catch up. But um, so inside of the lifter we want, if it's a Johnson style lifter, which is small block Chrysler, I'm sure it was a Johnson style lifter, maybe even been Johnson high lift or it's a Johnson style lifter. So we want no less than 20 thousandths preload and we want no more than 60 thousandths preload. That's our max preload and that's our minimum preload. If we have less than 20 preload, we risk the chance and you're probably going to is you're gonna break the top C clips off the lifters. Have you ever pulled an intake off anybody and seen a bunch of C clips in the valley? That's because there wasn't enough preload. Um, you could literally run a motor with no C clips at all. They just hold all the components together while you assemble it, but it never touches the C clips. They're just there while you assemble it. Once you set your preload, also is a good, it's to me, that's where I get my preload from, from the C-clip. So we want a minimum of 20. The more RPM, the more performance, I stick with more of towards the minimum. On a Chevy stud, 3 8 fine thread, a uh, um, uh, half inch preload, quarter inch preload is what we do, uh, which is the minimum for a race motor. Something, not necessarily race, because we're not gonna put a hydraulic lift on a race motor, but a performance motor, something that's gonna be hitting it hard performance, but you will be doing valve adjustments more often. You're gonna be hearing tick, 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 little lifters, you know, because you have the minimum preload. As stuff wears a little bit, you're gonna to have to do valve adjustments. You know, as a kid, I didn't even run a hood on my duster. So, so uh, I did valve adjustments, you know, one, once a week. One, I always pulled the valve covers off, always checking. You didn't go out. We had dual point distributors. We ran points. Yes, we ran points. And every Friday was a complete tune-up. Um, so that's the minimum preload. Anything more than 60,000 preload. At that, towards that 60 end, that's a totally stock engine. That's a totally stock engine that you're never gonna over rev and you're never gonna pull the valve covers off at all. The problem when you start getting above in the 60 range and more preload right in that range or more is on the inside of the lifter, there's a little hole that feeds oil to the inside of the piston. There's a little check valve oil. Oil goes in underneath the piston. So essentially you cannot compress a liquid. Right? So what a hydraulic does, it's self-adjusting because it does bleed, there's a little check valve and it does bleed the oil pressure on. But as you're turning RPMs and it's running so fast, as the cam comes up to open the valve, it cannot compress the liquid. So it opens the valve. Now, if you have a good spring pressure on, my man, I remember my duster, I could turn the engine over and the valve was open and I had double springs and all of a sudden, you'd see the lifter just collapsing, collapsing, collapsing. That's normal. But in running, it doesn't do that. You cannot compress the liquid, it opens the valve a lot more than, than going, you know, than, than collapsing the lifter. That's why a hydraulic is essentially self-adjusting because it can always, you know, if you get a little worn out, the, the plunger will go out a little bit. If it gets hot, the, the plunger will go down a little bit. So it's self-adjusting, it's a hydraulic lifter. Anything more than 60, you're, you're risking the oil hole and the plunger. Once the plunger gets down past 60, you're risking it collapsing and the oil just going on the top of it. So what happened is I would bet that, unless it was an oil pressure related problem, which I would bet, it's a Chrysler, it doesn't have an oil pressure related problem. I would bet that the plunger was just too tight. It had too much preload and it collapsed. The lifter just collapsed. Um, that's what I'm gonna get at. Um, that's, that's what I would check first. Also, what's the one thing that I do that, that, that's kind of uncommon? I pull sp spring pressure. We haven't lost a cam in 10 years, but it ain't by luck. I pull spring pressure. Uh, um, even on Mark's compressed air engine on everything. Back in the day, we put double springs on everything. We had a minimum 150 pounds, you know, 110, 150 pounds spring pressure. What we did is 110 on, on a flat tappet, 150 on a roller. 
what's the modern performance roller? Comp's been, been asking for 110 pounds on a roller cam. Why? Because there's all these lifter failures. So basically, if I'm going to do something and I don't want any problems, go solid. Go solid roller. Solid roller and be done with it. Um, all imports that are that are running um, a wafer type, they're solids. You don't mind, the, the, you know, the, if you have a tight lash solid, you almost can't hear it. And some of us old timers, we like to hear our rockers, you know, not clacking, clacking. It's a different sound when it's a beautiful, you know, all, all of them just sounding correctly. All right. Um, and then about the angle, uh, um, I wonder why the angle was, 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 what was wrong? It was part of the wrong push rod. The, the one item that we never buy, never ever 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 buy is the push rods what do you say uh, it's kind of silly you never I mean, buy push rods actually true. we never buy a premature we buy push rods in every single engine but very rarely is it just a push rod that the book calls for that's almost never uh, uh that's just a generic push rod that will yeah it'll work what we do is we check valve geometry i have a push rod checker get my valve geometry right and then get the push rod. If it's a mild motor, a comp has uh, push rods every 50 thousandths. Every 50, and there's a different length push rod. That's for a mild, you know, mild motor. For the most part, I don't want to be within 50 thousandths of the right push rod. So I get the actual push rod length. I call Matten. Matten makes our push rods. Any of our real motors has a Matten push rod in it. Unless when I did my my the the my geometry right out of the book it happened to be a comp crane or somebody's push rod that right out of, out of the book that's where i want it and so sometimes it does happen um, but it's never the push rod that's in the front of the, the the catalog for that engine it just never is well i shouldn't say never all right there was a question just a little bit ago that i would like to bring to your attention Stephen wants to know, he's working on a small block Chevy that has a timing problem. The timing mark is scattering around when I turn the timing light on. Could it be because I bought a cheap distributor or a cheap timing light? All right. Or either. I like that, like the 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 alien uh, and whatever. Could it be? Could, could it be? All right, so your timing is moving all around. Generally, when, when back in the day, you know, f the very first thing is you either got a bad timing chain um, or it could be in the distributor. Real easy. Pop your distributor cap off. It's a big cap. It's a big cap. Pop it off. Go have your beer. Put it back on. You're done. No, I'm just joking. Pop your distributor cap off. Then turn your engine one way. Doesn't matter which way you want to turn it. As soon as the rotor moves, put a little mark with the marker. Look at it with your eye. Have your buddy look at it. Somebody please be looking at it. Turn the engine the opposite way now. And see how much... It takes before the rotor moves. If you got to go a quarter turn and then the rotor moves, you have a worn out timing chain. There you go. There could be that the problem right there. Also, what you got to realize is that a Chevy uh, camshaft does not have a cam button in it or there's no plate to hold it in. The gear is cut. So as it spins, it's always pulling the cam back against the block. But... We don't like to do that. We like to put a, a, um, a cam button because acceleration and deceleration, you could have a lot of cam walk back and forth. If the cam walks back and forth, your timing is going to move. At idle, I don't think your cam is doing this, but it, it could be. So if your distributor, as soon as you move your engine, turns you know right back, you move it the other way, turn. It's not your chain. Go to the go to the distributor. Pop the cap. Well, the cap should be already be off. Um, look at your weights. Look at your weights and look at your inside. It's not solid. The shaft that goes in the bottom has a top piece on it and it has two weights and springs. I've seen all that all worn out and it'll just sit there and, and flutter. I've seen the springs off. People put real light springs on. Um, anything in that regard will make it just move back and forth. So maybe that helps. Um, the only thing that will ever go on on a Chrysler 318 is that about a hundred and some thousand miles, the chains will wear out. 120, 130, 140, and 50, whatever. Um, that's the only thing that ever wears out on a Chrysler small block. And the reason that, that um, you may be thinking, well, why, why doesn't it do it to a Chevy or a Ford? Because generally the engines are worn out be before the chain wears out. 
on a Chrysler, it will go. That's why um, they use it for, for the military. They'll go and go and go and go. And generally at over a hundred and some thousand miles, we'll have a loose chain, put a new chain on it, and it'll go another hundred thousand miles. So, um, okay. Wow, Howard Hutchinson. How old can a case of AMS oil get before it becomes unusable? I have a case of AMS oil turbocharged premium synthetic from 2005, unopened. Can I still use it now? Yes. I don't know why it would, it would ever get, AMSO is the real, is the real stuff. If I had a case, I would probably, you know, AMSO sells an oil analytic kit that's very inexpensive. I might just crack one open and send it to them and make sure that it hasn't broken down depending on where you stored it. Contact AMSO. They may buy it back. They may send you a fresh case just so they can have that. Does it have the old? It's not. 2005 is it is an, an oil can. Does it, do, 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 do people out there know what an oil can looks like? I remember back in the day, I used to stack cans by the window and make it a display. Anyway, um, my friend had a demon with the 318 in high school. Um, we beat the crap out of the thing. Yes, I ran a 318. It wasn't a demon. I, I had a duster. And I shot more nitrous in that thing. I did just about everything crazy with that thing. And it was a bullet it just never it never had a problem um okay okay so if we haven't seen any more questions i'm guessing you have satisfied all of everyone's intellectual curiosity for this conversation but okay. i do want you to know that there are a lot of folks in here danny who want you to know they love your videos they learn stuff from you every time well, so don't let the negative naysayers get to you oh i'm gonna go back this weekend and start editing that i didn't get rid of it like just get rid of the whole video. I just closed the laptop and said, look, oh, they're done. You don't, you don't like the way I edit. And like I said, you know, uh, um, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to get back into that. I'm fired up. Um, uh, uh, there's, there's way more people with a lot more issues than I have that are doing way better than I am. So there we go. So um, automotive wants to know if you've ever cryo treated any engine parts. No, some of our customers have and totally believe in it. I've, I've, you know, never personally have, but, um, yeah, most definitely, most, most definitely believe in it. Um, before we go, Trish is still giving these out and I'm going to give some more love for love is due. Um, Smokey belongs, not this one, but one just like this could be yours for totally nothing for free. Um, all you have to do is give some love back. Put it on something. Uh, where would you put the smoky belongs? On your car, on your window, on your... I've seen it on toolboxes. I've seen it on cars and windows. I've seen it on hats, shirts. I've seen people... All you have to do is once you get them is post it somewhere and put hashtag smoky belongs. That's it. All you got to do, you're also going to get that one there. You're also going to get this one. And you're going to get them from Trish. Trish Unic herself she's paying um all this on her own um and so all you got to do is contact her at if i remember right trish unit uh at smokeyunit.com right trish yes, it's trish 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 at, at, at smokeyunit.com so don't get me to get you the actual thing there's gonna be a bubble right and, here and there, there was and, a question about this not. earlier and i just want to point out that it did take us a couple of weeks to receive ours oh yes yes so, Yes. This is a labor of love for Trish. She doesn't ask anything of you other than that you post. She's got two twins. We're really trying to get a, a movement started. Smokey does belong in the NASCAR Hall of Fame. There's there would not be NASCAR if it weren't for Smokey. And so she sends this stuff out on her dime. Doesn't even ask for postage. I just saw. I uh, saw. I think it was it was this week, and she posted a big old box. She apologized. It's taking a while. She puts. I mean, she has to write all those out. She has to put stamps on all, you know, she has other stuff to do besides that, but this is her thing. I'm not getting to that. She's got twins, uh, life, it goes on for free. So it may take a little bit, but I haven't heard of anybody who has not gotten them. Um, she, she generally sends out a big box at a time. So a lot of people get them. Um, like I said, you're going to get, you're going to get the stickers. Uh, Smokey belongs. We know he belongs in the NASCAR hall of fame. Um, Crew, you know, crew chief of the year. Um, I wanted to show off if Rose is still here, and I know that she would appreciate this. If nothing else, I uh, got me inspired about fabricating 
you know, making stuff with out of your hand. I love aluminum. Uh, this is one of Smokey's jigs. Um, in particular, this month, Hot Rod Magazine has a, a, an article of the Hot Vapor engine. It's the 2.5 Iron Duke. Has anybody here uh, read that article um, in Hot Rod Magazine? Well, the 2.5 Iron Duke. Okay, if you could read this right here, that's Smokey's writing, his stampings. Um, I'll put it real close. Uh, is it on reverse for y'all? And Rose is here. Okay, there. Look, look at that. It might be on revo reverse. No, you can read it clearly. Oh, you can read it clearly. Yes, awesome. It, it says 12085. There you go. That's the date. January 20th, 1985. I can tell you where Smokey was and what he was doing January 20th of 1985. He was stamping this right here. I get uh, 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 Tony and uh, a lot of the, the uh, family members that they that that, that Smokey didn't have any any notes. There's you know there's notes everywhere. Every single thing he wrote notes on. I'm just I look at every little thing. So I mean I know what he was doing Christmas Eve, the first Chevy 302. Why? Because the Honing Stones that that Tony gifted me has the date on it. He wrote the dates on them. So there's notes on everything. You just got to look. Well, this is the jig that he used for that engine in the Hot Rod magazine. That's the 2.5 Iron Duke. Here's the jig that he made the manifold for that engine. Okay, so I can actually duplicate that engine. Um, we actually, I have enough parts um, and I'm going to make a, a 2.5. I'm going to put back together a 2.5 that's going in RS10. Smokey was working on uh, a 2.5 hot vapor for GM. I have the roller cam that's on the cam doctor. If you saw when I did a shop walkthrough earlier. Okay, well, um, check this out. Check this out. I don't know. I'm, I get excited. I know just one person will get excited. And so there we go. This is the jig. I think Rose would appreciate this. I know. That's what I, afterwards, I got so fired up. I went through the shop and started pulling this stuff out. And I said, if, you know, if one person uh, would appreciate it, we, I know that Rose would. This is a jig. Smokey made a jig for everything so that he could repeat it. So that it could be repeated and made more of them. So here's the jig. Here is, he stamped the jigs with what engine they were. Um, he stamped all these parts so that, fortunately, Tony saved a lot of these jigs. The majority of them went to the scrap pile for aluminum. So I don't have every jig, but fortunately, some of the parts that I don't have the jigs for, I have the part. So I can reverse engineer a jig for it. So here's the jig. Here's the top part. So the manifold that after you welded it, you pull the manifold out. I'm gonna put this back here because I don't want to lose this little screws, but I'm gonna show you. What, you might have a screw loose? Is that I, I got a, more than one screw loose, shot mom, you know that. Um, so this is the jig for the Pontiac um, 2.5 engine. And just so you know, Irrational Dive says he has read the new hot rod and has read the article. So awesome. Um, so that's the jig that Smokey used to make the parts on that uh, engine for that article on the Iron Duke. That actual engine um, is not in the original uh, um, Fiero. That was crushed. GM picked that car up and crushed the car. But Smokey pulled the engine and transaxle out. Tony found another 84 uh, uh, Fiero. And he restored it, put the, the gauges in the car like Smokey had in, in his, uh, actually when he had the car, um, he had photos of it. So, so Tony tried to do as, as, as close of a job. It looks identical to what, what uh, a GM had. Um, and then he put the original engine and tranny in it, drove it for a few years. It was on the power block. Uh, they had it on the dyno on the power block. And then he donated it to the Don Garlis Museum. So if you ever go to the Don Garlis Museum, that's not the original car. It's a clone, but it is the original engine and the original uh, transaxle. So here is, I have a, a 2.5. Uh, Smokey had a lot more than one hot vapor engine. I think we have, how many 
Do we have Shaman hot vapor engines? We have five. We have five hot vapor engines of all different kinds. There's the Buick, which is like what's in the DeLorean, had that 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 uh, combination right there, a three-cylinder Buick. Um, also, when he built for the Buick, um, you have to read read a lot. His books are awesome. You'll read all, all about all the hot vapor cars that he built. There's the manifold. This is a handmade, handmade. There's no castings here. It looks like a cast manifold. It looks like it was casted. I mean, I could get really close and all the wells are sanded. So he not only took the time to make something. One thing I have learned from anything of Smoky Unix, it had to look beautiful. It was just, it didn't, you know, it, why did he have to take a time to sand roll all of the parts? That's why a lot of people think that the manifolds or any of these parts are casted parts. They're not. They're not. They were meant to be casted. These are the prototypes. So they were meant to be casted, but they look, it's an amazing piece. It's an amazing piece. So there's the intake manifold, and we're going to put that engine back together again. Um, it, was, it was missing some parts. Um, it has some... It was a roller motor, didn't have the roller lifters, the cam got pulled out of it, and there's a bunch of parts that were that were missing. In a lot of stuff that I got in, in boxes, I got a bunch of different camshafts, and one of them has a tag on it, and it has right on it, it's a, it's a crane, it's a roller cam, the tag says right on it, uh, GM, S10, it was, the, it was, the, it was the, the version of the prototype that he was building for GM. So there was going to be a hot vapor S10 truck. I bought an S10 with a five-speed about the same year, and we're going to put that engine back together again, um, make whatever parts you know, might be missing, and we're going to put that back in the, in the S10. That's a project after the Plymouth. The, the Plymouth is what's coming back together now. Um, so Sam says we have a, a hostage. Oh, well. Oh, we have uh, a hostage. By the way, there was a question earlier. Yes, yes. Uh, do you have a valve adjustment video? Do you have a valve adjustment video? No, but I can make one. Do you want a valve adjustment video on hydraulic cam, on solid uh, valve that geometry was video? That Clark's question. So Jonathan, you need to be a little bit more specific about what you'd like to see. And guys, he really does appreciate when you have suggestions about what kind of content he should produce because... As you can tell, Danny is a wealth of knowledge, and he goes all over the place. I, if I you do. give him a little direction, it's beneficial for everyone. I, I just thought there was tons of... I love YouTube, you know. Uh, I thought there was tons of, of videos out there. Um, but but uh, uh, um, so I thought it was, that's, that's a simple one. But I'll, I'll make one if, you know... Uh, um, what is it? What did Terry say that I have a, 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 have a typo? A typo. Uh, that, then you know who wrote it. <laughs> then you know who wrote it, and you know it's genuine. You know Shop Mom didn't write it. Uh, if there's a typo, then you know it's genuine. Hot vapor. What is it? What is it? Uh, I, that's not what I see on mine, but perhaps that's on some other. Or I it, in the description, you know. It, it could very well. I got big thumbs and trying to do it on the phone. Um, I'll 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 take that. Uh, that that's how you know. That's how you know that it's genuine. If, if uh, the dates aren't always exact or the spelling isn't right or the pronunciation of words aren't right, you're at the right channel. You're, you, you're all, you are at the right channel. Um, so uh, Stephen would like you to make a video on small block Chevy hydraulic adjusting rockers. That's awesome. another good one. I think I'll do it the next time that we're doing a... Uh, 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 the next thing that I'm putting together right now, it's a Jeep motor, and you know, valve adjustment is valve adjustment, but it's the Jeep 134 Jeep, which is a military Jeep, and there's a lot of followers for that. They'd probably like it, but I think I'm gonna wait till we have a small block, um, maybe a small block or a big block Chevy, um, and I may just try to do a video that maybe has uh, valve geometry. That could be a whole video, but still, don't get too too crazy, maybe valve geometry how to check valve geometry um there's some neat little tools out there how to use those tools what you're looking for and then how to set preload um on a solid you're you're setting lash but the, it's still a valve adjustment um so i'll i'll do that um hang on for a little bit i mean i'm not gonna do it tomorrow but the next time that we, i have an engine on a stand I, I will most definitely do it okay
Okay, there, so there's also a question. Yep. Did any of the hot vapor engines have aluminum heads? I plan on trying to build one next year. I'm going to buy Smoky Book. I just keep forgetting. Okay, uh, call Trish. She'll get you the best price on the, the set of books. She may even still have some that smell like smoke. Uh, I think that's that's a... a, a, a that's funny. Uh -huh. that, that, funny, but actually... And you get them from T Trish herself. Um, yes, but th that's kind of... A, 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 yes, yes, they have... my the, the Plymouth that we have has an aluminum head. It, it's a 2.2 Plymouth. It has an aluminum head. There's an engine I have in, in the back that no one knows about, um, including Tony didn't know. There's a lot of people that came and looked. No one even knew what this engine was. I, um, one of the cars that I'll probably end up, uh, uh, b building after doing the S10, he did a Sunbird. No one knows about the, the, the Sunbird. If you read the books, it says he made one for every manufacturer and some, he made more than one. Um, so we have the 1.8, uh, uh, Sunbird engine, full, a uh, hot vapor and this one came right off the dyno still has some of the uh the egts on it um so i want to find a sunbird a nice sunbird something clean and respectable and i want to put that in there i need to do some research there's a lot of common things uh that um make this work so you can't take some of the items or some of the ideas and disregard some of the other ones and then say, oh, it doesn't work. That would be like getting a recipe for pizza and then saying, man, everything's great, but I personally don't like baking powder or whatever. I don't know what goes you in pizza. Powder, you don't put baking powder. What would you put in some, so a cake or something and go, well, I love everything, but I don't like that part of the recipe. So I'm gonna admit that. And I'm still gonna have a great cake or, well, no, it ain't gonna rise or it ain't gonna, you know, do it, do its thing. Some of the, the I'm gonna give you some clues. Okay, uh, but we have to kind of widen it down because we are getting towards the end and there's a couple of other questions you need to address. Just so. when the clues were gonna come out, uh, we gotta uh, wind uh, it down. I know how you work. No, no, all of them have something in common. What is the one common denominator? They all have standard transmissions. Um, if you're trying to achieve the max miles per gallon, then you want every part. Right, that's what the manufacturer was doing. So you don't want to just make an engine that has better efficiency. It passed full emissions with no catalytic converter, but you want everything. So one of the of the everything in the recipe is what do they all have in common? They all have standard transmissions. What do they all have in common? They have a gear ratio that feels like if you're taking off in second gear. Uh, uh, what so this engine produces? These engines produce so much torque that you don't need a low gear. Um, what do they have in common? It doesn't have real wide tires on it. They were... What about I, the radiators? We're going on and giving too many clues. Can I, can I, can I pull a tire out? Um, this is the tire that Smokey designed for, you're not gonna get these tires. The, the, the uh, Fiero at the Don Carlos Museum has a set on it. Goodyear picked up what they thought were all of them. They didn't. Um, but this is the, the bald eagle. This is a Goodyear bald eagle that Smokey Eunuch designed. If you read his books and you'll know that he was doing stuff for Firestone and Goodyear and, and the rubber plants and he was into everything. So this is his design. So a uh, low friction tire. Um, it looks like a tractor tire, straight cut. Um, where is somewhere under here? Um, it's right there. We could pull this down. I don't need to pull that down. No, it's probably historic. There's Goodyear to Smokey Eunuch is address. This is this is real, and this is real old, and it's really soft. So I only have one. Um, I think Tony has one. Um, he put four on the Plymouth. They were supposed to go on the hot vapor cars. That never happened, but Tony did put four on the, not the Plymouth, on the Fiero. So when you go to the Don Carlos Museum, it has four of these on it. Um, once again, everything. R read the books, man, and don't don't just take some of the stuff. It's all in there. It's okay, all let's, in there. Let's wrap up with a couple of questions. We're going to wrap up with a couple of questions. We're way past time. Cheers. So...
Uh, John wanted to know what is the name of Smokey's book. So apparently he wasn't one of our OGs from when we did Automotive Book Club, but I would appreciate it if you would show the trilogy of Smokey's books. Of course, we all know about Power Secrets, but uh, he wants to know about Smokey's books and a couple of other remarks one of which is from Jonathan who suggests valve geometry would be interesting as a video because he'd never heard of that before. Okay, so, um, and I have, they, they, they make them in a, a soft copy. You don't have to have the hard copy. Uh, the soft copy is cool because uh, like Faye writes her notes in the books. I shot my crazy on the, on the hard, oh on the hard copy. I'm not, not picking on Faye, I'm saying it's, I, you know, I bend pages and I get in trouble, but, but, but anyway, so, um, there's three books. This is the book set. They're still available. Um, they generally go for over a thousand dollars on, on eBay. You know me, I'm an eBay person. Um, but I always, you know, I have, and I know that, that I've done this before and it just cut me out of the loop because now I have competition, but you know what? It's not about me. And, and, um, <clears throat> I have a search. So oh, anything that, that smoke unit comes up the other day, uh, uh, some of these books went, I think went for like $300. I'm, I miss. So they're always coming up and sometimes you just go and p p place a bid and you know, if you're not in a hurry, Although, but can't you still get them from Trish, but, you, but you can so get them from Trish. Press? Yes. You can get them from carbon press. The set that I have, I bought from Trish years ago and it's a numbered set. So, um, I don't know if she still has the numbered sets. Just ask her. Call her. Carbon Press, Trish Unic, um, Trish at SmokeyUnic.com. And there's three books. Um, this is about stock car racing. What is it? Uh, Little Skimmy Rook. They're just, I mean, I can go walking under the... Okay, there's belly. another question. Yes. So, uh, would you ever do a video about crankcase ventilation techniques, techniques, pros and cons, so on? For example, exhaust vacuum ejection... For making power venom says you've already done one thank you venom i've done yes i have and i've included it in um it might be included in the um the valve cover powder coating video i think i've included talking about crank ventilation in a couple of videos um and i do somebody asked uh, a week or so ago maybe it was a week ago um more in depth on on the valve cover end of it which it's in the the powder coating video because i actually had to you know i had to modify them for crank ventilation but i guess i need to do i'm gonna go look and see if they're if they're just in other videos and maybe i need to just make one real simple crankcase ventilation but it's very important it is one of the the most probably the number one thing that we see that everybody wants to come up and and, and show you your car or you walk through a car show um I don't want to say everybody. They're all wrong. I don't. I, everybody just, uh, you know, I was guilty of it as a kid. What's the first thing we did when we bought a car? We pull the valve covers off. We put a set of Mickey Thompson valve covers and we put two breathers on it. You know, we got rid of all the vacuum hoses. Well, we need those vacuum hoses. So uh, if you want to talk about crankcase ventilation, next Friday, I see Shop Mom getting ready to shut this down. Um... We have a dog now. Did I mention we have a dog now? So uh, uh, a dog's probably waiting for us. Um, but anyway. Um, and Brian did stop in briefly for some of you are not OGs. We say peace and assembly grease here. And we say that as a salutation and as we leave because you guys matter to us just like assembly grease matters to us. Yes. So that being said, I'm not... I'm still with y'all. I'm going to click right here. Peace and assembly grease, everybody. We'll see you next Friday. Thanks. Thanks, Rose, for being here. Thanks, everybody, for being here and participating. And let me know or let us know what we're going to talk about next Friday. Bye, we'll guys. Bye. We'll see you next Friday.